The streets and homes of old Havana are worn and gray and dark. Street lights are few, and seldom does a car interfere with the quiet. But even now, near midnight, there is lots of life here. It's too warm and too humid to sleep. Screenless windows offer the only hope for relief from the hot Havana night. Few electric fans, no air conditioning. The people here are poor, yet they make do. The children, even at this late hour, stroll the streets. The homes are small, two or three rooms. Furnishings are sparse. But virtually everyone has one luxury, an old Russian TV set. In home after home, families sit and watch. The program choices are few, and it seems so strange to hear the voices of the children outside mixed with Russian voices on the television coming from inside. Soviet shows, Spanish subtitles. When the shows get too boring, there is still time to think and to rock. And what the people we talk to think about the most is the past, the way it used to be. They cling to the past, like the very old custom of gathering in a hall like this and listening to a troop of troubadours, old songs, all thoughts. The neighborhood stores are closed, but that doesn't matter, for the shelves of this market are completely empty. Old Havana must, however, coexist with the new Havana. And this is the heart, if not the soul, of the new Cuba, the Committee for the Defense of the Revolution. There is one on every block. The committee monitors everything that happens, making sure no one does or says anything counter-revolutionary, protecting Fidel Castro. But it does some good, too, getting the sick to clinics like this one, making sure that truants return to school. The committee also spreads propaganda, mostly against the United States. But when you stroll these streets, you learn it hasn't worked too well. Children ask where you are from, and when you say the United States, they smile and say bueno. Bob Beers, Channel 4 News, in Old Havana.